we said we don't like the certificates anymore, we like properties. So they swap the certificates for properties. And these properties are all backed up by, by those? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what are these subdivision uh, uh, blocks? 700,000 of them, so no, 700 million uh, are memorial lots. And the other 800 million are memorial lots that are marketable. Very, very marketable. Very, very marketable. All over the Philippines. So these are very liquid, liquid uh, assets. You're right. But still, real estate uh, properties. It's a, it's a property of uh, an affiliate of real estate called Mount Zion Memorial. Now, as the receiver, Mr. Chairman, done an evaluation, and I would like to pose this question to the SDC, but whether this initial uh, investment of CAM with uh, in real estate uh, assets can be considered proper or can be considered costly using uh, the term used in banking uh, transactions. Uh, Sir Marcelo, uh, SDC. That, that initial uh, decision of CAP to invest in real estate, in other words, what happened there was real estate financed the, uh, the real estate the projects of uh, real estate because yeah. of the money that they turned over to real estate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this happened before uh, I became a receiver. Uh, that, 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 I know, that's why, that's one of the reasons why uh, we have this problem. The question now is, uh, is that not part of your responsibility to find out whether that was a proper transaction, legitimate transaction, or it was a ghostly transaction that added to the hemorrhage of uh, CAP? And I'd like to pose this question also to uh, the SEC, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Marcel, as a receiver, is that part of your responsibility yeah. to find out what happened? Unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, that's not my part of my work because as of now, I only two main functions is to make sure that the assets are properly maintained and secondly, that I implement the rehabilitation. So it's not your concern who broke it? It's your concern to fix it? Not now, okay, now the SEC. Uh, what about the SEC? What is the position of the SEC with regard to this uh, transaction where CAP invested a huge amount of uh, their trust fund to finance the business activities of real estate, uh, which is an affiliate company of uh, CAP, by virtue of uh, uh, the ownership. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, based on my uh, uh, based on my discussion with the staff when I entered the department, the way I understand is what happened to CAP is that indeed there were uh, some related parties transaction entered into my CAP, and uh, these were actually. Uh, uh, their attention was called by the SEC, and the way I recall it is that uh, there was some unwinding uh, directives that, uh, that were given to, uh, to, to CAP. And this is the reason also on why it eventually led to the, uh, to the closure of CAP, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, what, as, as to the definite uh, dates, as to the definite uh, activities, we could provide the, the uh, dishonorable body later on. Yes, but as the, as the regulator, what uh, corrective measure was taken by SEC? Uh, they just took note of this? No. There, there were restrictions from, from, my, uh, Mr. from the prosecution uh, point of view, because uh, there is a public interest involved here. There were direct, uh, the way I recall it, so there were directives uh, for CAP to unwind all these transactions, uh, Mr. Chairman. Directed, but uh, you know, at the very outset, even if uh, this were corrected, Mr. Chairman, uh, it would appear to me that uh, a violation was committed. That very transfer of money, the very investment of CAP in real estate uh, business transactions or real estate projects was to be 
a violation per se. And if there was a violation, then legal action would have been taken by the SEC here instead of the SEC simply taking note of this. Uh, yes, uh, we agree, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, even in the interest of the uh, committee, uh, I still have to review the... Uh, because if that is the case, it's like a policeman uh, in the scene of the crime not doing anything. That policeman is also liable for, uh, at the least, negligence. And uh, at the worst, being a conspirator in the crime. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, if the body would allow us, uh, I still have to look into the details of what Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this is a transaction that has been happening, that happened uh, how many years ago? Uh, Attorney Sikia, Well, only five to ten years. It was uh, approved in July 22, 1998, that the court authorized CAP to subscribe up to 15% ownership in FEMI, the amount of 2 billion. Uh, so they bought 196,023 common shares. The par value then was 10 pesos, but in effect they paid 7,652 per share. This was in 1998. So how much per share? 7,652. For the par value of 10 pesos. 10 pesos. Yes, yes. But that uh, is not reflective of the market value of uh, real estate shares at that time. Femi, uh, this was a real estate management corporation, which was a private corporation. So it, it was not a public listed, a publicly listed corporation. Not publicly listed. Yes. So the 700 million pesos plus, compared to the 10 million, was uh, more of a, a mutual agreement. Yes, Your Honor, I thought they had to do it. The, the trans, there was a transfer price that is not supported uh, by a uh, public listing. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have to pay in the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Directors of uh, CAP. Let me know whether the SEC is aware of this, that uh, there was this transaction. And the, the transaction is to the effect that the par value is uh, 10 pesos, but uh, CAP agreed to buy real estate's uh, shares at more than 700 pesos. Seven, I'm sorry, 7,000. Yeah, per 10 peso share, so 700 times the par value. In other words, uh, we are talking here of a business that really uh, zoomed in value because of uh, business successes, uh, probably, to justify a bar value, an increase by bar value of 10 pesos to 7,000. That is almost like uh, the history of Polaroid, 